This is the Forex Q&A podcast. This is VP, professional Forex prop trader here in the United States, answering your user-submitted Forex trading-related questions every Monday morning. Now, if you have a Forex trading-related question on your mind, you go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum because Ask VP is closed. Sweet baby Jesus, hallelujah, Ask VP is closed. I will start adding links to the Discord forum in the show notes of every podcast we do from this point on, along with in the YouTube description as well. Uh, but if there's one thing I've learned from doing this as long as I have is that 9 out of 10 questions I had gotten were either already in the material somewhere or was just a matter of the trader testing it out and finding out the answer that way. And they just wanted to take the short route and just ask me what I thought about it, which is fine. But the point is having a question that you are stuck on is not the end of the world because the answer just takes either a little bit of research and by research, sometimes just a Google search, but, uh, but sometimes just a matter of going through my videos. You know, if you click my channel and go to the videos tab, there should be a little search box that you can just type in the issue you're having and then any video that may answer that question will pop up. And again, it could just be a matter of you backtesting and seeing which option comes out the best. People ask me, well, you know, I got this breaking through the baseline. I got two candles later, this, this, test it. You guys are never lost here, even if you think you are. I don't want you guys peppering the Discord forum with rudimentary amateur questions or questions you can easily figure out on your own. Remember I said it before, the reason, the main reason I've discovered all these little different avenues of trading that you have never seen before on the entire internet is because I was forced to figure these questions out on my own. And in doing so, it's amazing what you discover along the way. I mean, can you imagine just absorbing all the material that I put out there and then on top of that, finding your own little directions to add to the mix? You'd be unstoppable. But that last part's never going to happen if every time you run into a problem or an issue, you try to get an answer from somebody else right away. Patience, traders. Patience and putting in the work will never let you down in the long run. I'd like to thank a lot of you that came in this week uh, just to say, hey, I never really had a question. You pretty much answered all of it. I'd just like to thank you for what you do. And I thank you back. I thank all of you. And a special shout out to the No Nonsense Forex Discord Forum putting in the work. You guys have made that place awesome. You guys aren't taking any shit out there, which you shouldn't, but you're also doing your best to help everybody you can along the way. And again, the link for this will be in the description in the show notes of every single podcast I do from this point on, everything after episode 50. And I hope I was able to get to everybody's questions. The only way I would not have is if, again, you screwed up your email address. And if that's the case, um, yeah, well, that was on you. In about a week, maybe, I hope, uh, on the main website, nononsenseforex.com, there will be a little place where you can contact me. I will not answer trading questions. They will all get ignored. But if you want to contact me for any other reason, please make sure it's important, but I will have my email address there. It is the Forex Q&A podcast, and a good time for this question, because next Thursday's video, hopefully, 90% chance, is going to be on Forex Brokers, where I reveal my top brokers that I've done a lot of research on over the last you know, three or four months. And if you choose to go that route, uh, you will get a special bonus that nobody else gets. Bonuses that put money right back into your pocket. And that is good for the bottom line. But this is also a question I've gotten quite a bit lately, and it's something I think we need to address before we start really talking about individual brokers themselves. And episode 51's question is from Marvin from Fayetteville, North Carolina. And Marvin asks, VP, I'm trying to choose a broker, but I don't know if going with a dealing desk or an ECN broker is the best way to go. Can you help me here? So I can, and... I think, I don't know, we don't need to really spend too much time going over the differences between the two. That, I'm pretty sure, was in baby pips. So a lot of you at this point in time should already know this. So I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But just overall, in a nutshell, a dealing desk broker typically has spreads that are a little bit bigger, but doesn't charge a commission on top of that to where ECN brokers will have smaller spreads because they're more of a go-between to other places that will take your trade. So they kind of get to choose the best spread between wherever they're going. 
Uh, but they got to make their money somehow, so they're going to charge a little commission on top of that. To where the dealing desk brokers are typically the market makers themselves, and they're like, well, we already know what the spreads are going to be, and that's what you're going to get. So there are plenty of blogs and articles and other things out there to where you can really break down the differences between these two. And then there's kind of a, a broker in the middle called a non-dealing desk, but it's not quite an ECN, blah, blah, blah. Plenty of material out there already. But the reason you come here, the reason everybody comes here is to get a straightforward opinion about the best route to take, cutting through the nonsense as we always try to do here on the Forex Q&A podcast. So we need to dispel a few myths first before I give you my answer on this. And the first one I think is the most obvious one, and that is people who want to add an emotional element to this whole decision. All right. The whole idea, because if you didn't know, dealing desk brokers will almost always take the opposite side of your trade. While in a way, ECN brokers, the prevailing thought on this at least, is that they have your back and they want you to succeed. Now, if you were a brand new trader and all you heard was what I just got done saying, how a dealing desk broker is against you and an ECN broker is with you, well, the choice would be pretty easy for most people, I think. But not only is what I just got done saying so overblown, it's flat out wrong. Your broker does not give a flying crap about you, the individual. It is never personal on their end. So you are a fool if you make it personal on your end. They both want you to succeed, and they will both go to great lengths to make sure you do. Now, why would you think that is? Well, if you fail, you can't trade with them anymore, and then they stop making money. It's like the whole thing about insurance. Insurance companies don't want you to die because then you'll stop buying insurance. It, it is both types of brokers' best interest to keep you in the game because they both make their money two different ways. One is from the spread, and then the dealing desk will make their money by taking the opposite side of the trade, and then the ECN broker will make that little extra money off the commission. So let's take it back to the dealing desk side of things. You're like, why, why would I want to go with somebody that's just going to take the opposite side of my trade? Again, stop making it personal. They have to take the opposite side of everybody's trade. They don't get to pick and choose. You know, these places are highly regulated. They have to take the opposite side of everybody's trade. But as we all know by now, 99% of traders never make it to where they want to be. You know, Probably that many actually end up losing money over time. You know, maybe not 99% on that end, maybe more like 95%, but still, good Lord, you get to be the casino. You get to be the house. Who wouldn't do that? If I ran a broker, it'd be an amazing broker, but of course I would take dealing desk. You mean I get to be the house, the casino, and make money off of all the idiots? You don't have to ask me twice. Vegas didn't become Vegas because the house lost. So traders, look, when it comes to talking about dealing desks, uh, do not take anything personal. Do not resent them. Uh, this whole thing is completely overblown. Uh, they are not out to get you. Not, neither one is out to get you. They want to keep you around as long as they can. Because if you get wiped out, you're going to stop making trades and they're going to stop making money. Your broker, no matter who they are, does not have a vendetta against you. If you're with a dealing desk broker and you're just absolutely killing it, they don't care. There's an endless ocean of idiots out there that they're, they're always going to make money off of to offset the money you're taking from them and then some. And unlike casinos, they can't kick you out for winning. So you can just win and win and win over and over again. And they got to sit there and take it. But in the end, they don't care because they're always winning in the long run. So now let's take it over to the ECN side. The big concern that I've seen with people when talking about ECNs is safety, which is a huge concern, a legitimate concern. Um, I've been talking to people the last, I don't know, three, four weeks, seeing what they really want from their broker. What are the things that are really important to them? And it kept coming back to the same three things, ease of use, customer service, and safety. And the safety concern with ECN brokers goes back to what happened with FXCM back during the Euro Swissy crash. So what I brought up, I think in the Big Banks video, is how when that crash happened, if FXCM was a dealing desk broker, they would have probably raked it because they would have been on the opposite side of all those trades that got wiped out. But because they weren't, they were actually on the hook for all that money. Now, other stuff came out about them later on. 
some things that may or may not have been shady. You can go look all that stuff up on your own if you want. But there are a lot of other people out there saying that things like that were their demise, not the Euro Swissy crash itself. That might have triggered this whole thing, but it was more a series of events that led to one of the largest brokerage houses out there going under and having to get bought out. But bought out is the key. FXCM made a lot of mistakes, and what happened to them was a complete anomaly. There's a very small chance you'll ever see anything like that again, but they got bought out. That's the key. Everybody's accounts were safe. They didn't lose any traders' money that the traders didn't already lose themselves. And when you're big and you're regulated heavy and you have lots of traders under your banner, guess what? You are very valuable to somebody else. And somebody else immediately came and swooped them up, despite all the problems and baggage that that came with. And in the end, everybody was fine. So the concerns with dealing desk brokers are completely overblown and illogical, in my opinion. And the same would go for the concerns that people have about ECN brokers. So now that that's out of the way, let's take it down to the one issue that people want to really compare the two, and that is the overall spreads. So the old school prevailing thought is, well, ECNs have the lower spreads, but they have that commission. If I do the math, how does this factor in? And let me just say, look, you don't really have to do that anymore. The game has gotten so competitive that the spreads are almost always really low, no matter who you go with. The differences nowadays are so small that they don't even matter anymore. Now, why did competition get so heavy? Well, as we've talked about before, the majority of traders don't do what we do. They trade lower time frames. They scalp. They're intraday day traders. And so if you're making four, five, six trades a day, you know, those little tenths of pips might add up over time. I still think it's way overblown. But for no-nonsense Forex traders that mainly trade the daily chart, things like this don't matter at all. You guys know, I trade at a time of day where the spreads are up a little bit, but haven't gotten super high like that hour that happens right after the end of the daily candle. So I'm losing a few tenths of a pip here and there on every trade that I make, but this is a trade-off that I am more than happy to make. I am trading a couple tenths of a pip here and there for convenience, quality of life, and overall better trading results. There is zero need for true no-nonsense Forex traders to become discount shoppers here. As I've stated before, discount shoppers always lose in the end. Nobody wins the battle and loses the war like discount shoppers. But whatever side of the fence you do fall on, just rest assured that every main brokerage house out there has very low spreads. And the differences between the two are so tiny. And you're going to notice, too, at different times a day, one might have a little higher spread than the other, and then vice versa, you know, two minutes later. The days of there being a real clear difference in the spreads from broker to broker are pretty much gone. I don't know if any of you remember FXDD. It was one of the few choices we had in the United States, uh, but their spreads were ridiculous. They, and during the London session, they would have five pip spreads on the euro dollar. And then like on uh, the pound Aussie, you know, right in the heat of the, the heaviest time of the day trading, you'd see 13, 14 pip spreads. There's just no reason for it. And uh, no surprise, they're gone. And you might see a few other fly-by-night brokers with spreads that are clearly higher than everybody else. But for the most part, and especially any broker that I would recommend, you are not going to see much of a difference at all. So please do not let the dealing desk or ECN or somewhere in between element of the broker that you choose factor into your decision at all. I mean, as always, the choice is totally up to you. But if you're asking my opinion, it's all so overblown, especially these days. But the good news is, is technology has caught up and competition has caught up. And this is now one less thing that you have to worry about going forward. You want to be a dealing desk broker and take the opposite side of my trades? Go ahead. It's your funeral. And if you're an ECN broker and I choose to go with you, I feel like my money is safe no matter what happens down the road. Because I don't pick janky-ass brokers. I pick big, regulated, heavily capitalized brokers. So I don't have to worry about nonsense like that. I was really happy to see very few people actually factor this in when I asked them what they look for in a broker, but uh, I got enough questions on this on Ask VP that I thought it needed addressing here, because I'm sure in the back of a lot of people's mind it was a concern. 
But rest assured, in my experienced opinion, it does not need to be. Traders, we just got done breaking down Ichimoku for two weeks, uh, so you got a nice little fun baseline to play with, uh, along with some other pieces to consider. For those of you trading real money, I'm going to have some great broker options coming your way, and then in about a month or two, we're going to have the prop firm videos coming out as well. So make sure your systems are ready to go. And if you hit a stumbling block along the way and you're confused, do your best, do whatever you can actually to try and figure this out on your own. When it comes crunch time and you're actually trading for real, you're not going to have a bunch of people to fall back on. But if it's an obstacle that you just cannot get past, go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord forum. Links will always be down below in the description from this point on. Uh, but the work never stops, traders. Be relentless. And whichever route you decide to take, that is fine with me. But whatever route that is, go out and get it.